Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. Today I'm going to talk to you about checked versus unchecked exceptions. And I'm going to start off by just giving you a search for Java exception. And you should go to a site that says docs.oracle.com and inside here is pretty much, it's called the Java API and it's a library that holds every single object defined by Java and the methods, the hierarchy, everything that you need to know. So the class exception comes from the um, the object as a superclass, which is a superclass of everything, and then it comes down to this class called throwable, and then exception, and inside here is a bunch of exceptions that are uh, uh, these are checked exceptions and these are the exceptions that if you write a method it won't compile or a program it won't compile until you uh, either put a try catch around a certain thing or do a throws declaration in the method and that might those terminology might make more sense um, in the next few tutorials but an unchecked exception is ones that are very common and those are the ones you're going to get at the bottom of the screen when you run a code um, common ones are null pointer exception and array index out of bounds exception things like those are very common for beginners and here's a little description right here it says the class exception and any subclasses that are not also subclasses of runtime exception are checked exceptions. So here's all of the classes that are checked exceptions and if you go down farther you can read about each one of them and when it's used or when it's thrown rather. Let's see what a runtime exception is and that comes from exception class. So these are the ones let's say Runtime exception is the superclass of those exceptions that can be thrown during the normal operation of the Java virtual machine. Runtime exception and its subclasses are unchecked exceptions. So, these are things that can happen at compile time. Uh, you, can't, you can't really anticipate it. Sometimes the user might give you, you know, you're looking for the user to input a integer and they put in a string it's going to throw an exception and that's something you may not have been able you could have handled it but that's it's a lot of code to um, you know prevent that type of stuff if you didn't think of it beforehand and there will always be something a user will do with the program that you didn't even think about covering so let's show you some examples of what each one does right here I have a simple int x equals 6 so I'm going to print out what happens if we divide x by 0. And down here it says exception and thread main thrown. So java.lang.arithmetic arithmetic exception. And it says that you divided by 0. And it tells you what class, what method, and 6, what line it was thrown at. So it was thrown right here and that is an unchecked exception uh, because you could have wrote your own exception to say to check whether an input or something was zero but a lot of times you can't but let me give you an example of a checked exception and Eclipse is great for this because if you're writing in notepad plus plus or something you might get lazy and just write out a little piece of code that requires um, some t uh, exception to be handled and what Eclipse does is it gives you a red underline and with that it lets you know that this needs to be handled so you don't have to go code up a bunch of code to notepad plus plus or whatever uh, text editor you're using and compile it and then be like oh I forgot to th you know put it in a try catch or something so let me sh um, let's see I.O. exceptions usually have to have try catch. Let me uh, think of something. Let's just say str 
string file name equals uh, driver.txt. I'm going to make this up. I'm not going to actually run it. And it's going to be a file called file equals new file. And in its parameters, it takes in a string. So we're going to give it file name. File name uh, consists of this text file. And now, let me import that real quick. Now we're going to create a scanner object of input, and we're going to say new scanner, and it's going to take in a file that it's going to scan. So let's import that real quick. And right here, you get this whole bit of code underlined. In. It says unhandled exception type file not found exception. So the reason that they want you to throw this or surround it with a try catch means that if you ran this code, maybe it can't find this file. So it's already setting you up to handle that situation. And a lot of times with these, I just do a try catch block. And I'll explain that more in detail when it comes to that video, which will be maybe like two videos ahead of this one. And pretty much what it's going to do is it's going to try to run the code right here. And if it fails, it will catch this exception and you could just do a, a simple you know sys out file not found okay let's run this code because this file isn't doesn't even exist so it should print that to the screen that's a lot prettier than your program completely shutting off and having all that red code down there so that's the that's the difference is an unchecked exception you're not always in control of and you can write specific exceptions yourself to handle them but a lot of times it's done at compile time and the program might just shut off because it had a fatal exception so an unchecked uh, exception I'm sorry are ones that must be handled with this try catch before um, you can even compile it and let me show you what I could my other option was to throw it to the method let's see what happens if I run it now see it'll throw the exception down here that's why I like using the try catch is because you can handle it however you want this one will just uh, throw it to, through this method but we'll get into what throws means and get a little bit more specific so thank you for watching and please subscribe and continue to watch these tutorials.